Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to do a quick video today on a solar aerator for the pond. Uh, I see a lot of videos, people talking about it during the summertime, and there's not a whole lot of videos on like during the winter when it's cold. And just to see like how it does, if it can keep up and things like that. So real quick, if you wanna know if it works, it definitely works. You can see that this is almost gonna break through here. That's already open and, and pumping air into the pond. We've had really close to zero degree nights here, so the whole pond's been frozen. But with this running on a nice sunny day, and even sometimes when it's cloudy, this will have no problem punching through the ice, opening it up, and uh, getting things going for the fish. So let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, so solar panel, pond pump, aerator, crash course 101. Here's the solar panel. This is a 240 watt solar panel. I was able to get this on Facebook Marketplace a few years ago. Uh, it used to be, I think it was like on a mall, a rooftop somewhere. These things usually can last like 20 years. So the efficiency here is, is still awesome. I think it's only like five years old. So been rolling with this, built a, a frame for it to account for uh, the winter angle, right? Sun's gonna be lower. So I need to have a lower angle on the panel. And then during the summer, I can move this on up so it's higher in the sky uh, to catch those beautiful solar rays there. And then from here, it's wired into this box I built. Looking in here, here is the solar charge controller I have. Uh, from there, it charges this 12 volt um, battery. This is a deep cycle marine battery. This is the kind that you want. Obviously you wanna get something that's bigger because that's gonna have more amp hours. From there, it goes back into the solar charge controller. Uh, from there, there's there's you know a chip on here that calculates the incoming voltage and amps, how the battery is doing, and then the load that's drawn on the DC inverter. So, from solar charge controller to the DC inverter, from the DC inverter, it's then AC into this uh, this air pump, and then I have it going to this manifold here that's split off to two. 3 8 weighted tubing. If you look here, it runs out and since it's weighted, once it gets into the pond, it'll sink. And the first one's right here, and the next one is over there. So that's that's kind of Crash Course Solar 101 for you. Another thing I see people say, hey, why did you do solar? Why didn't you run an electrical cable? That would be way easier. Yeah, it would be easier. And uh, it would be great because then it would run 24 hours a day. But the house from where I'm uh, standing right here, that's like 800 feet away. So to run 800 feet of wire and to account for voltage drop, to get out here, to just have 120, um, I would need some really big wire. So I think like two gauge, uh, I think at the very most like four gauge wire just to account for the huge voltage drop out here, just to you know be able to get 120 out here have like 10 amps for a big motor to like an air pump for this to work wasn't really feasible right thousands of dollars so instead for this whole setup doing it myself um kind of find finding some things online that might be used like the solar panel building your own box kind of doing everything yourself instead of paying more for a kit this is maybe 300 bucks maybe 400 i mean your, your big, biggest expense is definitely going to be the battery and finding a nice solar panel but everything else, you know, if you're doing it yourself, totally doable. So that's another reason why I was forced to do solar and recommending it for you guys. I recently had the, uh, the pond excavated too to be a half acre in size. So this was the original pond here. This is a quarter acre. Uh, last fall, I had a person out here with an excavator and was able to uh, excavate a whole nother area here, bringing it to a half acre overall. And so one of the big benefits of uh, having an aerator pump going during the winter is I, I have this stocked with some fish. I want to keep stocking it with you know, bigger, better fish. Um, so, so one of the big benefits is, hey, let's keep oxygen in the pond so that the fish can breathe and also uh, get a big hole in here to get a lot of this pressure where if this thing was frozen solid, all the pressure that it pushes down on the pond for the fish and traps a lot of that bad gas that's in here. Um, so this is this is doing two things, oxygenating the pond and letting all the other gases from, you know, waste and, and things that are just kind of doing, doing things in the pond, right? Fish doing their thing. 
uh, there's there's just some gases in here that need to get out. So that's what this does. But but check out this aerator. I mean, this is the other ones over here. It's it's obviously still under the ice, but this one's just going strong. Like this is a nice big hole. Uh, even during the winter, like I said, you know, zero degree weather here at night that um, it still has enough pump from the, the pump there to push air out and really open this hole up and keep it nice. So just some tips and tricks I would recommend uh, on this journey and, and learning as I went. Uh, there's, a, there's an aerator you can get. They're on Amazon. It's, it's made by Rootscape and, and I'll include the link in the description. But that works on 3 8 tubing. Uh, and, I, and I love it. It does awesome. I'll, uh, like I said, I'll include it. S really recommend it. It's like 60 bucks. It, it just totally uh, just aerates perfect, right? So instead of having huge bubbles that just escape, they're, they're coming through these really tiny uh, ports on this, on this tubing in here that really um, makes the air a lot tinier, smaller bubbles, and really pushes that air out into the pond instead of it just, you know, punching through the, the water and just going out into the atmosphere here. So would definitely recommend that. Another thing, and, and I learned this by trying to be cheap and learning the hard way, is definitely paying the money for weighted tubing. I know that there's a lot of people, and even myself, oh, it's fine, I can just, you know, get regular vinyl tubing and, and it'll be fine, I'll tie rocks to it to just weigh it down. It was such a pain and it would end up floating on the, um, on the water because if I didn't have enough rocks on it and you know, duct taped or, or zip tied on, um, it, it would just end up floating. And, and it was a giant pain to be honest. So the weighted tubing has been great. Just kind of out of sight, out of mind. It just runs back to there and you don't even need to worry about it. Well, hey, that's all I got for now. Uh, again, if, if you're thinking about doing a solar aerator and wondering if it works, uh, guys, it's totally worth it. I would strongly recommend it. Um, if you have the knowledge and, and just kind of like the capability and willpower to do it yourself, it's totally doable. You're going to be so happy you did it. Uh, if, there's, if there's any questions you have, uh, reach out in the comments. Let me know. I, I kind of went on this journey myself too. Tons of Googling, trying to find out how it works, what I should get. You know, I, I can help you too. A, a quick, another quick tip is, hey, based on whatever panel you have, right? If it's 200 watt, if it's 100 watt, you know, that's what you're gonna be bringing in at peak. And so it's important to not get too big of a pump that isn't gonna be able to keep up with that, right? Because not every day is sunny. And, and even when it's cloudy, this will still be pulling in some power. Uh, so if you get a little bit of a less, you know, a lesser powered pump, it's, it's still gonna be able to charge that battery and keep that pump going. Um, so, so like I said, I'll, I'll answer any questions you guys have. I kind of been there before and it, it's crazy what you learn when you're kind of forced to do it because you just end up buying stuff and saying, well, I'm going to figure it out. So that's, uh, that's what I had for today. If, uh, if you guys are interested in more videos on it, definitely let me know. I'll, uh, I'll do some more videos, maybe like crash course on here. Here's how you hook it up. This is, you know, this is how I run the tubing, all that stuff. But uh, until then, catch you later, guys. See ya.